today we're going to talk about the cell transport. At the end of the lecture, you should be able to tell me about the passive forms of transport. Passive transport is essentially the movement of molecules on their own. Yeah, that's what it means. So only certain things can go through. But what are those things that can you go through? Yes, yeah, small. Yeah, small things go through. Now, can large things go through? Jessica? No. No. Did the starch go through the bag, Marshall? No, what went through the bag? The eye bag. because it's small. Now, in addition to that, because the phospholipids have that polar end sticking on the outside, they have to be small and uncharged. small and uncharged. All right. Things like that that can go through are water, gases, iodine, etc., except actually not water because it's charged. Although, are you guys ready for the fun part? We have this whole thing we have to learn about called osmosis, which is a movement of water through the cell membrane, which for the longest time people thought just happened on its own, but now we know that it doesn't quite happen on its own, but we're still going to have to learn about it as if it happened on its own because you still get tested as if it was happening on its own. So, you're welcome. Okay. So, you're teaching us about things that aren't exactly correct? Yeah. Uh, 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 no water. While you're doing that, hit the next button. All right. So most poly polar molecules can't go through. Water can kind of go through, but we'll talk more about that later. Polar is another word for charged. Yep, hit it. All right. And the movement is based on the concentration gradient. It's going from where to where. We did this in the bell work, so it should be on the tip of your tongues. It goes from high concentration to low concentration. Very nice. Next. It'll go until equilibrium. No, that's right. It goes until the whole concentration is evenly distributed everywhere. That's called equilibrium. Hey, guess what this is? Fading. There's actually there's a technical term for this type of background. It is called a gradient. It's called a gradient. That's called a gradient, like concentration gradient. So if you had, for example. Here's a high concentration of white molecules, and here's a low concentration of white molecules. Guess where the white molecules are going to go? To the low concentration. To the low concentration. Let's see. There they are. What's that called again? The D word. The better D word. That's called diffusion. And then when that is all done, you will have this. See how the white is evenly distributed now? Now it's equilibrium. Oh, so it wouldn't just go back and forth like high, low, high, low, high, low? Oh, you mean like if, if they if they all got up over here? Yeah. yeah. And then they go over here. Yeah. Okay. Now you guys ready for the best part? At equilibrium, true or false, the molecules are still moving. They're wrong. The molecules keep moving. In fact, a little white molecule here could end up over here. But it's equally likely that a white molecule from here would go over here, and since it's equally likely, we call it equilibrium. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, no, maybe? Remember that whole absolute zero thing, the molecules are always in motion. They're always moving. They're always moving. You can't stop. That'd be absolute zero, and we've never, ever, 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 ever been able to do that ever, no matter how hard we try. Yes? Absolute zero is possible. Um, not, we've never done it yet. You think you can do it? It's, it's, it's yeah. probably maybe. If we have better technology. That'd be really cool. Absolute zero. Technically, I think outer space is absolute zero, but there's also like no molecules because it's a vacuum, so there's no molecules too. Much. Yeah. Anyway. Equilibrium. Yeah. Well, concentration is equal on both sides. That's called equilibrium. The movement still happens, though. That's the important part. The movement is still happening. <laughs> There's no net movement. Now, that doesn't mean that we ban the nets. What's that mean? Isn't it kind of like a total? Exactly. Not just kind of like a total, it's exactly that. It's total. Net means total. Net, gross, total, all mean the same thing. So there's no total movement. For every molecule that moves this way, it's equally likely that a molecule moves this way. And so it stays in equilibrium, even though the molecules still can move. Great! Hey look, here's an animation of that happening. It's better than the other one. You see how it starts out with more of it going over here and less of it coming back, but as a result, the total flow, you guys see what I'm saying here? The molecules that can move 
If they can cross this barrier, then they can cross a barrier. That's the deal. And you see as a result, even though more of them are moving this way, so we have a net movement over here, some of them can still move that way. And over time, eventually, you'll have equal movement back and forth with no net movement. Now let's say this purple molecule is some kind of solid. Let's say it's the solid purple. What would we call this type of diffusion? Dialysis. Right. It just moves right through the membrane as if it wasn't even there. So let's throw some terms at your faces. There's diffusion, which is, just click through these, which is moving molecules based on the concentration gradient across a membrane. When it's a solid, we call it dialysis. Yeah, keep going. When it's osmosis, that's the diffusion of water. Very good. So let's talk about cells in their environment. Cells are always floating in this water-based environment. Since they're using term two vocabulary, that's aqueous environment. That just sound better than watery environment, aqueous. So cells are always water, remember? It's a little baggy of water floating in water. Here's our aqueous environment. Boop, there it is, floating in an aqueous environment. All right, so as a result, you've always got this movement of molecules in and out of the cell via diffusion. All right, so we're both water in, water out. And so it's all about balancing those two solutions. We need those, both of those solutions to be in... Yeah, we need them both to be in equilibrium. Yeah. The blue solution that is the cytoplasm here, right, it's got, it's more than just water, right? There's stuff dissolved in it. And it's safe to assume that there could be different stuff that is floating in. Red for your blood, because that's what your cells are floating in. As a result, the cytoplasm of all your cells actually tends to be slightly negative, which is just kind of a little fun factoid. So the question is, where will the water move? Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere, in and out of the cell. In and out of the cell, that's osmosis. Now we've learned that osmosis actually happens through these small proteins called aquaporins, which is a channel just for water. But we'll just pretend like that's not a thing yet until, like, yeah. As a result, it's all about tonicity. So anytime we're comparing two solutions, say the blue solution compared to the red solution, there are three options, right? Because there's stuff dissolved in there. You could either have, let's say, let's say we focus on sugar. You could either have more sugar in the cell than in the red. You could have less sugar in the cell than in the red. Or it could be, yeah, it could be equal. It could be the same. So we have three words for describing those solutions compared to each other. One is isotonic. What's iso mean? Same. What's that? Same. Yeah, iso means the same. And so these would be when the two solutions are? The same. The same what? Equilibrium. No, don't say equilibrium. The same what? What's that word that we use to describe how much like sugar is in here? Concentration. concentration. So when we have equal concentration, same concentration. When we have same concentration, that's isotonic. Now it's worth noting these two solutions then would be in equilibrium, but that's not equal. Do you guys see what I'm saying? There's two different words that mean two different things. Isotonic would be if there's, you know, concentration of five grams per liter sugar in here and five grams per liter sugar in there, then they're in equilibrium because they're both they're both isotonic, which means they're both the same. Sometimes it could be hypertonic. Use your science word skills. What's hyper mean? Above. Above. So, for example, if there's a crap ton more, yeah, go click. There's a crap ton more sugar in the bag than in the liquid. We would say that this solution here is hypertonic because there's more. Then, what do you think hypotonic is going to be? Rice. The uh, less concentration. Yeah, the lower concentration. Hit it. Which would mean if here you have blue and here you have red. And this one's hypertonic, guess what that one is? Hypotonic. So remember, it's comparative words. Usually, when we talk about these solutions, we're going to talk about the solution that the cell is in. Because not only are your cells like baggies, but your cells are a lot like gummy bears. Little squiggly things full of like a sugary solution. Now, obviously, the sugar in the bear is way higher than the sugar is in your cells, unless, you know, something terrible is happening to you. Anaphylaxis. Are you guys ready for this? You know how gummy bears get all gummy? How's that? Guess what kind of molecule they use? 
<laughs> Look at it's uh, not bone marrow. That'd be really cool. It's, it's the hooves. Piggies. Piggy. Piggy hooves. But 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 guess what? That's made out of what structural component? Baggies. No, not baggies. <laughs> <laughs> lipids. No, well, not phospholipids, but lipids. So not only is your cells like this, but your cells are like delicious little gummy bears too. So gummy bears have a high fat. No, 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 not a high fat content. High sugar content. Which then your body's going to store as fat because that's way more energy than you need if you eat a bag of gummy.